we were standing uh, and we applauded and all of us uh, cried, but it was fantastic evening. Obviously, his contract was up for renewal, this we knew. But why it wasn't renewed, whether it was Rudolph's desire or whether it was uh, some other person's desire, I really don't know. Um, Rudolph was very ph philosophical. He just uh, said, I won't be here. Um, I still don't know why <clears throat> they push him out. Maybe because they find out he was here maybe because political, maybe, I don't know, you know, but the, the important thing for me, I think, Rudo was very upset. I don't know exactly when he became to be ill, but uh, I don't know if there is a, a correlation between the, 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 the both situations. Paris Opera, he changed a lot from the beginning, and he fight a lot. And then little by little, they took away the chair from, from him to give it to somebody else. I, I, for me, it, it was not, it was not, I wanted, he could, he could stay, and he could, but uh, I saw that it was not possible, because it's not, not only for physical reasons, it was uh, for, for um, personal and intimate uh, reasons. I, I don't know exactly. I think that Rudolph had exerted his will successfully over so many things. And I think what happened to him at the end really was now for the first time in so many areas, his will was not going to make the difference anymore. He just believed that something would come and save the day and he would continue because he believed in longevity, he thought he was going to live well into his 90s. We talked about that one time, and I, he, he thought he was going to be the, you know, the, the grand old man of the ballet world. Little by little, his muscles go away. Even if he was work very hard every day to make the muscles stay strong, but, you know, there was a two, there was a big fight, the age and the age. He was really sick. He had already the first operation in Vienna. And I remember he was very weak. I went to, we met in London, Heathrow Airport, and then we fly together to Melbourne. And uh, I tried to help in every sense, Rudolf, you know, because he does, I remember in hotel room, he never want to go out, he never want to work, he never go, he doesn't want to do anything, he have no energy. But then in the afternoon after bath, he find a way to become back a little, maybe 50% of Nurayev, go to the theater and make the performance. His strength was not the same. His willpower was not the same. But what was in his mind and what he would, oh, thought he regret not to have done, it was Le Bayadere. Um, that was still at the back of his mind. And that's how I suppose we asked him to come back to do this Bayadère. I had seen nothing at all of Bayadère. So I went to the Paris Opera one night and was laying on the sofa, giving his instructions to the, to the dancers, you know. He could hardly move, but just with the, his hand, just to, to say things like this. It was hard because we could see Rudolf was very, very ill. Even now, I feel. And uh, but what, but what was good also is we did work very much, but the dancers were very um, with us. He still had a lot to say, and he was there a lot, and there was, the strength was still um, very evident in terms of what he desired to do, what he wanted to, how he wanted this production to be. I fly from Milano and I went directly to Rudolf's apartment in Cavolter. 
There was the people fly from New York, from all his friends came here. That day I had stopped my appointments earlier because I didn't want to be late. I took the subway to go to the opera because I didn't want to be late. Ludo was very, he didn't speak much at that period because he had a problem, you know, with, uh, to use the voice. So he didn't, uh, he didn't say nothing. So we drive from Cavoltaire to, to Opera Garnier. Rudolf was very tired at that moment. So he had to sit on the stairs of the lodge. And we were looking for the woman with the key to open the lodge. And she arrived and she didn't recognize Rudolf. And she, in a mean way, said, but what are you doing here? And suddenly Rudolf looked at her and like a wounded beast with the most incredible glance I ever seen. And, and I told the woman, but you know, you're talking to Mr. Noyev, please. We was in a room in this box, just Rudy, myself, and Michel Canesi, the doctor. And, and everybody came to say hello to Rudy. I had a strange feeling about all those people coming to say farewell, in a way, to Rudolf. I was behind him during the performance. And in the moment he asked me, Michel, could you take me in your arms, please? And so I spent maybe the whole act, the first act, holding Rudolf in my arms. And I, I couldn't move because after a moment I was uncomfortable, of course. You see, I couldn't feel my muscles and everything. And I thought to myself, look, all this pain that you have, Keep it in your head, because this, you are living an historical moment. You have Rudolf in your arms, and this was a great, great moment. We were all doing uh, our best for him. It was, um, he gave him, us a wonderful gift, and we wanted to make him uh, happy. And then came the end of the performance. <laughs>